name's T Tobias McIvey, and I'd like to tell you a little bit about my family here in Florida. It's been some time ago. Here it is, uh, 1894, and I'm thinking back about when uh, my wife Emma and I first come here from Georgia, and that would have been, uh, let's see, 1858. Our boy Zach was just a year old at the time. And Emma, let's see, she'd have been 20, and I was 25, so that's quite a while ago. I hate to even say it, and I, it's hard for me to think about it, but Emma passed on last year, and I'm having a little bit of trouble dealing with that. But I do the best I can. We done had a good life together. And, uh, I just wanted to share a little bit of that story and let people know what happened here. Uh, we had a farm up in uh, Georgia, oh, about 40 acres of good old Georgia red clay, which is, you just can't hardly grow nothing in it. And uh, finally decided that we'd just strike out for Florida and start a new life. Zek was a year old. and. We wanted him to grow up in a, in a nice place. And we knew there was homesteading in Florida, so we moved on down, sold that farm, and whatever money we got, we used it to buy the wagon and two horses. And we had a sack of corn and some seeds, shotguns, some shells, uh, a lot of tools that it would uh, be required for me to build a house. And uh, one of the things that was very important is that we had our, our cast iron Dutch oven and some silverware and a few pewter plates. And that's about it. That's all we got for what we sold up there. So we started south and past the Oak and Oki Finoki Swamp. And we got into Florida around a little town called Ferdinandina. Ferdinandina is a little north of Jacksonville, right on the St. John's River, where the St. John's River begins. And we, when we got to Ferdinandina, we traded uh, them horses and got two ox, two oxen, and a small cow, just a little baby cow, uh, which we could use uh, for milk, especially for the boy, because he wasn't uh, very old and he needed milk. We knew that that Civil War was coming, and that was another reason why we thought we would head on south, because we knew that there wasn't a whole lot in Florida worth fighting for. So we just decided that'd be the place to go. Uh, we settled in a great forest uh, as we followed that St. John's River down a few miles. and. Uh, first year we were there, we almost starved to death. Didn't have that much to eat except pokeweed and uh, coon meat. We ate a lot of coon meat. Just uh, one of the reasons was that uh, I trapped uh, and skinned those, those uh, coon and traded them. There was a trading post on the uh, St. John's River and I'd go there and, and trade those skins and we got ourselves an oil lamp and some provisions and things that we needed. So it was a hard life. Um, I started to build uh, the second year, I started to build a house and I made uh, shingles for the roof. I could make 25 a day. The problem was I needed 500 of them to, to do the roof, so it took me a long time to do that. And I had to cut them trees down and took the oxen and dragged them into the area where we were going to build our house, and, uh, put the walls up, and then I had to build furniture. I built a fireplace out of mud and stone so we could cook. Again, all we had was that cast iron Dutch oven that we brought from, from Georgia with us. And I trapped animals, and uh, whatever we had, we would, uh, we would salt the meat, smoke it. We had a little smokehouse that I built. And uh, we would can 
uh, different things, vegetables that we grew, and we would buy some flour at the trading post whenever we could. And every once in a while, one of them wild hogs would come by, and they would uh, get into our our garden. We had it fenced in, but they'd find a way to get in there, and they'd root in there and get all them vegetables. I remember one time, uh, them hogs got in there. It was a whole herd of them that came by. So I got my shotgun. I took Zach, and we went into the woods after them. I saw them down by the river, and they were washing down all them vegetables that belonged to me. And I told Zach, I said, now when you kill a hog, I said, you got to make sure that he can't find you, because you, you, they ain't going to drop that easy, and one shot may not kill them. And you got to be careful, because if they see you, they'll come after you, and they'll hurt you. So I, I killed the hog. I just blew his head right off. Sick. I says, if he can't see you, he can't get you. And that's just the way it is. So, we uh, took that hog and we had a big black pot. And we scalded it, scraped off the hide, and skinned it, cut that meat up into chunks. and Some of it we ate and the rest of it we smoked and kept it for the winter. Uh, 1863, yeah. I was working out in, in the garden and turned around and here was uh, three people there. Didn't know where to come from. Here they were Seminole Indians. And uh, I asked them, well, who are you? And the one Indian said, uh, well, I'm Keith Tiger. And my friend is Bird Jumper, and this is my squaw. And I said, well, where are you, where are you come from? Where are you, what are you doing here? And they said, well, we, uh, we were sent to the reservation with all the other Indians, but we left. And we want to go to Peheoke. And I said, well, what's Peheoke? Where, where is that? And he said, well, that's down below the big, big lake south of the big lake. He said, that's where our people live. That's where our tribe is. And that's where we're going. And he said, we've been traveling for almost a year to get there. But we're very hungry and we are tired. Then I said, well, that's no problem. I said, you're welcome to stay with us. And we don't have very much, but we'll share with you what we have. He said, well, we must warn you that there are men chasing us. And I said, well, why are, why are they chasing you? What have you done? You know? He said, well, on the way here, we found a small calf in the woods. And it had no mark on it, so we thought it was wild. So we killed it, and we ate it. We were starving. And then these men came on horses with these dogs and told us that it was their cow, their calf, and that uh, we should not have killed it. And they were going to whip us and beat us and maybe kill us. So we, they escaped. But they have been chasing us. And we're afraid that they will, they will catch us. Well, it wasn't too long after that that I heard uh, the barking of dogs. And out of the brush here, like so, came four or five dogs, maybe six, and started to attacking the Indians. They had them all surrounded and they were barking at them and snapping at them and all of a sudden these men showed up on horses and they had these bull whips and they were whipping these uh, Indians. And I told them they had to stop. And they explained to me that the Indians had stolen one of their cows and killed it and ate it. And I said, well, there was no mark on the cow. So it didn't belong to you, it belonged to anybody that would, would find it. Which was the way it was at that time. They said, well, that was our cow and we're going to take care of the Indians our own way. And I said, well, you're on my property and I'm asking you now, I'm telling you to leave. All of a sudden, 
those dogs started attacking those Indians and they started cracking those bull whips. And I took my shotgun and I killed one of them dogs. And I said, now, you folks don't leave here now. I'm going to start with you or one of your horses. They said, we'll be back. You better be ready. And I said, you come back here, you'll be sorry you ever showed on this property. And they rode off. So I told the Indians that they could stay and sleep in the, I had a little barn that I had made, and they could stay there. And we would give them something to eat, and then they could leave the next day if they liked. And of course, uh, the next day when I woke up, I went out to the barn, and they'd already, they already gone. So I decided to go over to the, to the settlement trade for some supplies and found out that things were getting pretty bad. There were very, very little supplies left. I got what I could and I came back. And it wasn't long after that that a, a man appeared on a horse and he told me that uh, he was appointed by the government in Florida. And he was drafting men to work in the cow cavalry, and I, I said, well, what is the cow cavalry? And he said, well, that is where the uh, cowmen would go out and round up the wild cattle, and we would drive them up north to the St. Mary's River near the border of Georgia, and then the Confederate soldiers would take those cattle and move them on into Atlanta, and they were used to feed the uh, Confederate troops. I told him I didn't want to be in the cow cavalry, and I didn't want to fight in the war, and I didn't want any part of it. But I wanted to stay with my family. And he told me that if I didn't go, he would shoot me, and he was uh, allowed to do so. So I had no choice. So I said goodbye to Emma and Zach, and told them that uh, I would be back as soon as I could. So we started out, and they gave me a, a whip, and they gave me a horse, and they taught me how to use the whip. And what we would do is go into the, to the woods like this, and we had dogs. We called them catch dogs. And the dogs would go in and chase the cattle, and bring them out, and we would take those whips and crack them, sounding just like a rifle shot. As a matter of fact, they used those whips and those sounds to signal each other. And one crack meant one thing, and two cracks meant another, and three cracks meant danger. So there was a way of communicating, and I, I got pretty good with that whip. We started out <clears throat> toward a place called Gainesville, and uh, we worked our way up and started gathering, uh, herding these cattle. and. As soon as we got enough of them, we put them in the pen, and then we'd move on down the road, and uh, we would herd some more, and put them in the pen, and pretty soon we had a pretty large herd, and we just kept working our way about 12, 15 miles every day until we got into the border of Georgia and Florida. And once we got there, we just drove those cattle right across the river and the Confederate troops were on the other side, picked them up and took them on north. I remember uh, there was some folks waiting there at the bank and one of them cows couldn't make it across that river and, and drowned. So there wasn't no sense in them worrying about that cow and those people that were sitting on that bank were starving. They were really, really hungry. They grabbed that cow and dragged it out to the shore, cut that thing up into pieces, didn't even hardly wait to cook it. They were so hungry, they just started eating that raw meat. That's how bad it was. So after we drove all them cattle up there, I asked them if uh, I could leave. They said yes, and they agreed to pay me a dollar a day. So I had $14. I was out with them 14 days on that drive. Fourteen dollars was a lot of money at that time, a lot of money. And I knew then that I could buy some things for my family. 
but I asked them if I could have a whip and a horse. And they said, well, you can take a whip, but the horses we need, you cannot have it. So I had to walk back, and it took me almost 14 days to get from where I was back to the homestead. I got back and uh, started farming again, and I had to go to the trading post. I used some of that money to buy some supplies that we needed, and it wasn't long after that somebody else showed up. And again, said to me, uh, I'm from the government, and I'm going to draft you uh, to help uh, work. We're going to build a fort in a place called Olusti. There's a big battle that are taking place there between the Confederates and the Union. And again, I told him I did not want to do this, but he said it was uh, my duty, and if I didn't go, that, you know, it'd put me in prison or shoot me. So once again, I had to leave. Went up there and started logging and worked with a lot of other men and there was a large group of Confederate soldiers there and a big battle started while I was there and I wasn't about to get into a battle. I didn't even have a gun so I went out and hid in the woods and after the battle was over I started my way back home and on the way back I found a dead soldier and he had his his horse was there and his gun and some of his ammunition. So considering that he would no longer need it, I decided to take it. And I went on back to, uh, to the homestead. When I got there, I could not believe what had happened. There were a group of Confederate deserters, soldiers, that had come to our homestead and they had taken uh, all of our possessions, killed our cow, ate it, took all of our vegetables, and they burned down the cabin. And Emma and Zeke were okay, but we had nothing left. So it was at that point that I decided to move south, far enough that I'd never be bothered again by the soldiers in the war. So here it was, 18... Let's see, 1864, and we got, uh, we went to the end of the St. John's River, and then we got into a little town area called Kissimmee, and we got on the Kissimmee River, and we followed that on down, and we settled about 50 miles from a town called Fort Pierce, and we were on the east bank of the Kissimmee River. And of course, uh, I could go to Fort Pierce to the trading post and get what I needed. And that was important. So we always lived on the river and we always had to be near some trading post so we could get things that we needed. Because at that time in Florida, there was very little. So one day I decided that I had to go to uh, Fort Pierce to get some provisions. And uh, I wasn't sure what was going on with the war. And Emma, was very unhappy because when the soldiers came and burned down our place, they took uh, this here uh, cast iron Dutch oven and we didn't have anything to cook in. So we just had to cook on sticks and over the open fire. That wasn't any good. So I decided to go and take my skins and see if I could uh, get some provisions. And it was a long ride, and I couldn't do it all in one day, so I, I got to the, to the uh, trading post, and I talked to the man over there who, who ran the place. And he had told me that uh, some of the Union Army had come and taken all the supplies. There was hardly anything left. And he said that uh, there wasn't much he could sell me. And I asked him, well, what about uh, ammunition? I needed some shells. And he said, well, I hid some of that under the floorboards, so I do have that and I'd be happy to sell it to you and you can leave your skins here. So I took what I, I could get, I, I got a little bit of coffee, they didn't have any flour, which we needed, and I started on the way back and I made camp at uh, a few miles away from the post, and at night I heard somebody out in, in the brush. 
And here there were some uh, Seminole Indians. And I looked at them and uh, they looked like somebody that I had seen before. And here it was Keith Tiger and Bird Jumper and the Squaw. And I'd ask them, well, what, what are you doing here? And they said, well, we are here to buy ammunition, bullets, but nobody will sell anything to us because we are Indians. And I said, well, I, I had some and I bought uh, a little and I will share it with you. And you can, I don't have anything to eat. There was nothing left at the uh, trading post. And uh, I wanted to get some flour. They had none, so, but I, what I have, I'll share with you. Mostly coon, coon meat again. So we sat around the fire, and they told me that they had flour. And I said, well, "Where did you get flour?" And they said, "Well, we make flour." And I said, "Well, from what?" And they said, "We have a plant. It's called the kunti, and we grind it up, and then we wash it, and that's how we make uh, flour. And we will give you some." And they also had something, it was a, a corn that they had ground, and they washed it in lye, and they cooked it, and we ate that. So we had something to eat that evening. They told me that if I wanted to uh, herd and, and uh, gather cattle for, for a business, I could do such, but I needed a horse and I needed a catch dog because I had showed them my whip. They told me that there was a wonderful, wonderful horse called the Marsh Tacky. And the Marsh Tacky was a, a pony that the Indians used, very small, and it was very fast and could get into the weeds and make quick turns like a jackrabbit. And uh, it was a horse that had uh, been used to being in the Florida wild and it was a great great animal and if you had that plus the whip and a couple of dogs you could go out and, and herd the cattle and bring them in and put them in the pen and then take them and sell them. So they told me that that, that would be what I needed to do in order to, uh, to, to become a, uh, a cattle person. Um, they told me also that if I ever needed help, that I should go to the Great Lake, the big, big lake, and walk south. And once I got to the southern part of that lake, I would be in the area where they lived, and it was not necessary for me to look for them. They would know that I was there. So I told them that if I ever needed help from them, I would come. We, uh, I went back home and we started farming again and one day Zek came into the house he was all excited and he said, Dad, Pappy, you wouldn't believe it. You just wouldn't believe it. I said, well what? He said, come on outside. And here I looked in the pen and there was this beautiful, beautiful horse, a marsh tacky, and tied up to the corral, to one of the posts, was two catch dogs. And I knew where they came from. They had to come from those Seminoles.